Myths and Fables, 5th Editions, Dungeons and Dragons streaming game just for dancing adventurers like you. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and all across the internet, wherever, and also wherever you get your podcasts by searching for Feats and Fables. I'd have to put it for this. If you want to watch us live and chat with us, join us on Twitch from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday nights. And our entire backlog is on our YouTube channel. I'm Paige Lightman, the DM, and I'd like to welcome you to Aglarond, a peaceful pastoral land of dancing half-elves. Uh, our heroes of Aglarond are part of the Foresters, elite scouts, rangers, and dancers charged with defending Aglarond's borders, particularly against undead from the evil fascist nation of Thay. Our heroes are dancing towards the Singing Sands, racing the nation of Thay to try and recover an ancient elven artifact. The Red Wizards of Thay wish to use the artifact for their own evil purposes, probably causing people to not dance. Previously on Feats and Fables, uh, our heroes uh, rescued a Yuan T from some rot trolls who had invited them to his home city of Shazanthas. Let's meet our dancing heroes! All right, so our heroes, we have the dancing Victor Toussaint, a human eldritch knight fighter played by Ron Frankie. Show us your moves. I feel like we're getting close to this artifact. <laughs> <laughs> we have Wildfire, a fair <clears throat> Genasi evoker wizard played by Dancing Joe Streaky. So I've heard that we're going to get, get to see Burning Man while we're here. I'm really excited. We have Ross. A lizard folk Drake Hello. Warden dancing ranger played by Coda <laughs> of Kodab Games. Hello, Your lizard is not dancing. It's very sad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have Malagar, a dancing drow twilight cleric played by the dancing Dr. Andrew Wong. You do enjoy burning things, wildfire. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, and we do not have... Belwyn, our dwarven paladin princess played by Ben Heisler, because Ben and I got our uh, second Pfizer vaccine shot on Friday, and Ben feels a little puny, so he will not be with us tonight. You cannot make me fucking dance. <laughs> or he didn't want to be part of the dancing intro. I could be either one. But thank sure. you for doing your part. D despite what the disembodied voice is saying, I am sure Ben is dancing wherever he is. Mm -hmm. He is Legally really required not. to. Legally required to. <laughs> yeah. Really not. Yeah. Legally required to. Yeah. All right. Um, HR. HR demands it. Speaking of which, hey HR, why are we dancing to start the show? I mean, I because that's just how this pod this this stream starts now. But also, brother <laughs> founder forty seven. Five month subscription. One month for each of us. Thank uh, and you, rally Sounders. security with the Prime sub for three months. Woo! Rally security. Yeah. I feel we, safe for our We dance because we love our our viewers. Yeah. And listeners. And not because of any undiagnosed conditions. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, are we still yeah, dancing? Because I... this is this is the most yes. exercise. There was a new, there was a new dancing incident that occurred. Oh, no. More dancing. Oh, 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 oh dance, uh, dance. dancing. I was Shakuba. really hoping that Megan here was going to help, but she I is see how this is the most upset about this whole situation. <laughs> yeah, I would get a cat is to also dance with me, but they're upset all hiding. About this situation. And Chakuva subscribing for what? six months. Okay, that's it, Lily. Six? It's time. We You're can't not so dance. Much. You're gonna hate this so much. Uh oh, the dancing cat. You know it's good when our podcast involves dancing cats. Where are our beasts? She's kitty gonna kitties. claw me at the end of this very badly. <laughs> right? Probably. Oh, you baby. deserve it. Right. Oh, this is the right? musical episode. Better than the recap <sighs> episode. Yes. How about the recat episode? Aww. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Cat. You want some water? You know, like, guys, my, my situation right now is <clears throat> it's not great. This dog yeah. is very curious about this lizard that I keep picking up and holding, and this yeah. lizard is so 
over all of it. Mm. Much like Paige's cat. Yeah, Hugan, Hugan was D-O-N-E done. <laughs> okay. Uh, where, where were we when we last left our heroes? Uh, Brother was... Founder, this is my classroom lizard for all of my kitties. And uh, it, we are on spring break right now. <laughs> so she is currently living at home with us. And she's also the perfect representation of uh, Ross, really. Mm -hmm. Lily is very excited that you got the lizard because she wants to murder it. Really does. This luckily there is a dog between her and that lizard, so. Yep. Much like in Dark Souls, she's gonna have to learn how to take out the dog first. So that I tell you, man, it's just that. a matter of time until they have an encounter where she uh, she swipes at the dog and he runs away, and she's gonna learn that she's the boss. And it'll be all over. I, I, <laughs> it'll be great. I keep telling Lily to go for the tail weapon. She doesn't listen, though. <clears throat> Your cat doesn't listen. There's news. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? All right. I'm going to be right back while y'all get started. Wait, what? Where are you going? He has to go. deposit a lizard. I do. Oh, he made lizard mistakes. It's not working. How much do you get for the lizard deposit? <laughs> 30 bucks 40 bucks maybe mm. you know i don't think they recycle lizards in georgia anymore they should they yeah should. glass and lizards both yep. fell by the wayside exactly that's why i see all those nice. errant lizards on the side of the road mm. you know a little farther south those are actually called alligators <laughs> that's also a problem yes that is also a problem all right uh I guess we'll wait for Coda to return. There Coda is. Hello. All right. So you had been talking to Gazriel, this uh, uh, serpent folk. Mm -hmm. And he had said that his community of Shazanthas was not very far away. And that he had recognized um, uh, Belwyn's uh, patron deity, Nubanyan, the fire main. Uh, which is not a very common deity, and said that the uh, priestess of Nobanian was kind of in trouble. Hmm. Uh, so, what you doing? I would well, imagine we're going to... Sorry, go ahead, Victor. I was going to say, now that Belwin isn't here, I, really, we don't feel any need to rescue this fire <clears throat> priestess lady. Stop. What are you talking about? Isn't no one's part right of here. our mission to help those in need? Not really. We're not like a do-good organization. We're a military unit. For the betterment of Aglaron, from what I was told. But we help. We're we're aiming for big picture stuff right now. Uh, we can certainly escort them back to their settlement. Mm-hmm. That is certainly within our remit. Maybe we can get the thing that we came for and then see to their problem. Well, we should certainly figure out what their problem is, but... Should we try and use our uh, artifact locator, see what it tells us? Do I think we're close enough, Paige, to ar activate the item? <laughs> Are we... I Paige, I got some specific instructions about how to use this mystical artifact. Yes. You what do I think, uh, as a checked... smart person who knows a lot about magic... <laughs> have you checked the user's manual? <laughs> right? Unfortunately, it's only written in other reasons. Um, So, maybe, probably, you're. it's kind of in the area where... It might work and it might not because it's you no, know, no. It's not like you step five foot over, and bing, the Wi-Fi connects. No, I get you. Uh, <laughs> we get the direction of his camp. Is it like is it further into the Singing Sands? It is. Well, so if his camp is in the direction that we're going anyway, or roughly the direction, let's get, maybe if we get to his camp, I can spend some time setting up this artifact where we're slightly more protected. Hmm. I mean, seems well, reasonable. Do it right now, or you could. Do it later, or <laughs> I'm merely here to present options. Sure, I, I think we, I think our plan is we're going to take escort him back to his <laughs> camp, and then at his camp, I will activate the item. Sounds okay. like a reasonable plan. 
go. All Guys, we gotta get back to Algoron by the end of the session. We gotta get on it. Yep. <laughs> get back to where? Algoron by the end of the session. All right. Never heard of it. All right. So, uh, Gazriel leads you through the desert uh, and slips into a crevice in some rocks. Hmm. Uh, and it's Ooh. it's wind carved, and the top is open, so there's ample sunlight. But it's about 40, 50, 60 feet deep, and these uh, the sandstone walls have all been basically contoured out by wind. And uh, it's it's a relatively like it's not a short walk through there. Like it's probably an hour of travel towards the heart of the Singing Sands through these kind of. Uh, they're not quite caves because you can see sunlight, but you know what I mean. Narrow crevasses. Mm -hmm. um, Pidge, this is by far, I just want to let you know, the most fantastic environment you've set us through on this journey yet. It is so warm and dry. <laughs> and amazing. Like, just. Premise does a very specific. I could be here all day. Mm -hmm. Like, I yeah. just. It, you know how most people like get, walk through the shadows? Like I'm all over that those patches of light. Yeah, no. It, it even in here, it's cooler than it is outside, which means it's probably like 85 degrees. Right, a lovely 85 degrees. Yeah. So about the temperature you'd like to keep the house, mm -hmm. your personal house. Mm -hmm. Uh and it's part, part it, of me while I drink this hot tea. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and they open out into a larger area, and you can see carved out of the uh, uh, massive desert stones a, uh, a very um, detailed complex of buildings. And you realize you're basically inside of a crater. And the, the crater walls are rather um, large. <laughs> And you just walk through them. It took you an hour almost to walk through them. Now, it wasn't a straight path. But it was a long walk. And the interior surface of the the crater has carved buildings all around it. And there is a panoply of uh, organisms here. Uh, you see most of them are Guanti, but you see uh, uh, various Saurian-featured folk as well as a few tieflings, um, uh, goliaths. You see something that might, some folks that might be half ogre. What you do not see is a single other human here other than the five of, well, other than Victor. <laughs> other, than Victor <laughs> other than Victor. Other than Victor, period, full stop. Even I've got a little elf in me. Yep, and people, like, are scared stopping and looking at Victor and like they're trying not to be rude about it but you can tell that that it's causing somewhat of a stir I do have crystals growing out of my face Victor is yes. practically a cyborg with all that ling <laughs> he's got um, yes. remind that, me how are we communicating with our Yonti guide right now? because uh, Belwyn who will still be there in spirit can yeah. translate from giantish Okay. Um, also, in the welter of conversations you hear uh, in this kind of busy courtyard, uh, you do not hear a single word of common. I'm sure. I'm sure the shopkeeps speak common, though. It's fine. It's the universal language of trade. Exactly. Uh, well, and in fact, after a hushed conversation between Gazriel and Belwyn. Uh, Belwyn says, well, uh, as you see, the problem is they don't really recognize humans as right civilized yet. So, uh, a lot of it is going to be either, uh, one of the primordial languages or giantish or draconic. Uh, there's a smattering of Elvish here and there as well as Dwarven, but they kind of view them as upstarts as well. Hmm. Who does? Well, most of the culture here. Uh, from what I can understand, uh, this is sort of the last remnant of the Great Draconic Empire of many, I don't know, long damn time ago. Oh, is there a dragon? Uh, she makes face and talks to Gazriel, who's like, <laughs> no, there's no dragons here. Well, there's not many dragons here. 
I mean, so what, what other languages do I hear being spoken, Paige? Uh, draconic, primordial. Uh, like I said, a little elvish, a little dwarven. I speak primordial like a pro, so I, I, okay. I've spoken. All, I speak all of those languages thus far, so. Yep. Uh, I mean, if that is their views on humans, what are their views on drow and wit the lizard folk? Well, you seem to be like, you know, the meme of the guy walking with his girlfriend, and he sees the girl in the red dress and is going, Wah. "You are the girl in the red dress of that picture." You are getting a lot of uh, very appreciative glances, not in a necessarily. Uh, sexual respect, but people are like, ooh, wow, look at that. As opposed to the Victor, which is like, ooh, wow, look at that. <laughs> I'm going to uh, walk a little taller. Page. Yes. Strut it. Maybe Strut puff it, up Ross. my chest a little bit. Sure. Don't worry, Victor. We'll drag you up later. It'll be fine. No, no. You should You should definitely uh, throw your frills out. Uh, it's a good look. Mm. I mean... I, I can I can do the puff and I can get the get yes. throat going, but I don't yes. really have like yes, as a yes. as an alligator crocodile. Oh. I really don't have frills. Huh. I wonder it if we could surgically attach them. Concur. Or magically morph him into something with frills. Ooh. Ooh. Mm, is mm. this is this the return of Ro uh, Rosszilla? Yes. <laughs> like let's face it, Rosszilla definitely has frill. So uh, I guess. Did you have any idea of where, um, is there an inn or? Uh, yes, they're not too used outsiders here. Uh, let me, let me find a way. And then there's a, a hurried conversation in a variety of different languages. And, uh, you are shown to an inn. Great. And, uh, Gazriel says that, uh, he, un Bellin has explained that, uh, you are on a quest that is time sensitive. So he is going to take her to the uh, Temple of Nobanion and she will join you later, but you are to start whatever you need to do uh, now and she'll catch up. That's very right. practical. Well, now that we're in the middle of civilization or at least uh, lizard civilization, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I will uh, set up the mystical artifact and, and activate its magical word. Okay, uh, when you activate it, uh, concentric circles of green energy uh, emanate from it. And after a moment, they all they go from circles to like a teardrop shape. Ooh, and the huh. point of the teardrop shape uh, is pointing directly to the, I need to look at a map. Pointing, That's a weird direction. That yes, thing's... pointing directly west. Hmm. I get out our atlas and cross-reference it to figure out what's west of us, if anything. Um, so these mountains are listed in your atlas as just a solid chain of uh, mountainous area. Mm -hmm. The crater itself is not at all on your map. And uh, past this west is just open desert. Okay. Occasional rocky outcroppings. Uh and areas of open sand as well. All right. Also, so, even farther, almost directly west of you, is Emek. Is that uh, the Thayan Fortress City? Yeah. Yeah, the Thayan Fortress of Emek, which used to be uh, used to be Undamore, a um, Aglarondian uh, fortress. You don't think they took it? No, that would be too far, wouldn't it? It's hard to be sure. Um, we can but follow the direction it's it's pointing. Um, what time of day is it, Paige? Late afternoon. <clears throat> Wait, are you familiar with the discipline of triangulation? Can you activate this thing again and take one step to the left? <laughs> I'm not path. sure. It's like Paige. I move around a little bit. Is it like? Is it like hard pointing at something like a compass would be, or is it a little loosey goosey? It's pretty hard pointing at something like a compass. Okay, I, I am, I have a no far more intelligence than is necessary to do some triangulation. So I try to determine its distance from us. 
Um, so it takes uh, a bit of wrangling, and you need to get out of this inn because there's just not like you Enough can't space. do it yep. from the room. Yep, yep. Yeah. that makes sense. This will be, uh, be funnier as you start to walk and like walk through different parties that are in the inn, <laughs> and you're like, yes. no, no. You end up out in the market, and uh, there is um, like you cause kind of a stir. People are like walking uh, into things, looking at Victor, but you cause kind of a stir. I'm walking very carefully because I need to have a very accurate step distance sure. to figure out how far it is away. So everyone's probably looking at me like very carefully, like heel toe stepping until I'm determined I have the correct. Di- I've, I have enough. Uh, significant digits of distance. We could use a string. And activate it. Yeah, you think it's like 12, 13, 14 miles away. Okay. Does that put it outside of Emic? Inside of Emic? No, Emic is about. It's way outside of Emic. Emic's right. about fifty miles away. Okay, cool. That is uh, so I say I will return and say no. It's it's for sure. It's for sure inside the desert. It's not an Emic. It's about fifteen miles away or so. That's good. I was concerned that we would have to go into that particular den. Didn't you say that it only works from a specific radius away anyway? Yes. Yes. Actually, Tamith, the Cheruboga, the Rashemi witch, said that it only worked within a, kind of from within the Singing Sands area. Mm -hmm. And Singing Sands, even at its widest extent, is only like, I don't know, 30 or 40 miles across. So it's not huge. So we did all that math for nothing. No, no. I mean, they could have moved the artifact. It's hard to be sure. Um, Math is its own reward. Exactly. I enjoyed it. Isn't it though? I enjoyed the process. Where did you even get that sign sign table from? The wildfire. (laughs) It's in my bag of holding. Obviously, that's amazing. You know, I think every spell book comes with like Appendix C. With is, the trig table. Is mm-hmm. trig no. tables like appendix B is a random number table? Yep. It's, it's like it's like a composition journal on mm. on one inside cover is just all of the like uh, measurement um, con- uh, conversions, yes. and then on mm-hmm. the back side is yeah, your trig standard trig tables. Right. Yeah. Uh, hey, Paige. Yes. While while our wizard is por- performing uh, some mathematic met. Magical mathematics. Mathematics. Uh, mathematics. What what <laughs> kinds of things do they have for purchase in this Ugh. lizard town? Specifically, I'm looking for like potions of any sort. Sure. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't take long for you to get some directions to a herbalist uh, uh, slash potion seller. And uh, they're not, they're kind of on the other side of the market from where you are, but it's not hard to find. Hmm. Commander, do you think it might be wise that we see if they've got anything that might benefit us in our journey? Well, I, like, what? I'm really <laughs> hoping they've got another potion of growth. <laughs> Don't you? We found you another one of those, didn't we? Yeah, you're holding it. It's in your pocket right now. I, I thought you had very specifically had not given out those potions yet, Joe. No, you definitely have the potion of growth. That's all you. Yeah, uh, I believe we did distribute them. We, there might have been some joking, but practically speaking, um, we need to have the potions on our person so we can use them if we get mm-hmm. attacked. That is true. Anyways, no one's going to take that away from you. No, no, you don't understand. I need another potion of growth. Maybe you've got a potion of growth problem that we should talk about, Ross. (laughs) I could quit any time I want. I just Mm. don't want to. It's well and good to enjoy the effect, but once once you start to need things, then then we should talk about it, how it's... uh, has negative effects on your 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 livelihood. Maybe you're right. Maybe I maybe I've just been using the potion of growths to cover up some sort of deep seated trauma. Yes, we should we should talk about this more, Ross. This this is your intervention. Well, I spend the time I was going to go shopping, uh, having an intervention with uh, 
with with Malagar. Malagar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we really dig deep into some 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 scabbed wounds here. And he yes. starts with Ross. The potions of growth are actually kind of a shitty magic item. That's where he starts. <laughs> <laughs> if it's fun, I don't think you can call it shitty. Like that's that's just me. Yeah, stop True. yucking my yum, Joe. <laughs> no, it's this is an intervention. <laughs> like that's the whole point of an intervention. <laughs> so it it seems like we're probably not going to cover any ground tonight. So let's get ready for an early morning, I guess. Well, I mean, any more be traveling? You would, would travel in the evening, wouldn't we? Uh, well, ordinarily we would. I don't know how long all this takes. I mean, you can leave anytime you want. It takes me about 15 minutes to do the trig, so... Alright, well then we will travel in the cool of the evening, and hopefully um, we can come across the artifact uh, around stopping time tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. You head out into the nighttime desert... Uh, hang on just a moment. It's my favorite time in the desert when the air is cool and that sky has that glorious blue hue to it. Uh, so you head off into the nighttime desert and uh, you travel and are pretty much unmolested. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's spiders are a whole thing and that's just life in the, in the singing sands. Uh, but... Uh, other than your typical spider issues, you are um, you are not disturbed. Uh, you have to every once in a while get the um, uh, vial of liquid out from the the fluid of the Tarsellius fountain um, to check your directions. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a desert nighttime travel scene. Uh, there we go. And uh, obviously the stars aren't doing this, like, only if you look at them real sturdy, I guess. Uh, but as no, no, no. I hang peyote. Everyone gets peyote. We're in the <laughs> desert at night. Everybody gets some peyote. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Uh, let me know, though, if that's for real, because there could possibly be consequences. <laughs> uh, and you can travel, like, you get about halfway there, uh, about five miles. And um, Ross and Malagar notice a whole lot of tracks. Uh, and they're, they're still fresh. And so, like, they must have been made within the last few hours or half day at most. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a whole lot of people, like, booted feet. Uh, but when you start looking at it more close, uh, people and camels are obvious prints that you see. But when, Ross, you start looking at it more closely, you find uh, skeletal feet prints, and you also find dragon footprints that are, you know, large, four, four or five feet across, that also look skeletal. Hmm. What on earth is They're going one? that way. <laughs> Wait, is that the way we're going? No, you're going this way. They're kind of at an angle to you. Oh, Victor, excellent. we have a problem. Take a look at these here. And I'll kind of point at the large skeletal footprints. That's a big footprint. These were made by dragon Ken. Kind. Hmm. Dragon kind, not Ken. Dragon, dragon kind. That could be dragon Ken, you don't know. But you'll notice the distinct lack of any sort of flesh pots in these tracks. Hmm. That is distressing. How, guess... how fresh are these tracks? By the looks of them, I would say that they are... P Paige, help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> Within a couple of hours old to a half day old at most. A half day at most. They're, They're close. not far ahead of us. They're going the wrong way, though. Mm, they're going at an ang a tangent to the, the way that the device is pointing you. Which uh, is the... Wrong way. Wrong way? F fair, but it's not like 180 degrees. No, I get that. I get that. 
We always knew that they would spend more time searching than we would. But with a undead dragon, that search might present us before it presents their quarry. Yeah, we'll have to make sure if they if they capture us, no one, you know, tell them that we have a device that points at the artifact. So, are you ordering me to kill Ross if we get captured? I feel like I'm not ordering you to kill Ross. Fireballs would be gotcha. able to kill all of us. Side, right? Side note, though, do you think they're also here for you know this really powerful artifact of interest to undead? We know that they are, in fact. Right, so maybe we've got some competition on our way to the prize. Yeah, I mean, if anything, this should uh, encourage us to go even faster, although also cautiously. Yes, and also consider so, our retreat. Mm -hmm. Oops. Uh, so this is, like, the path that they seem to be going on. All right, well, that makes sense. They're flying through this guy. Yeah, so the green. So if the green box is the thing you're after, you're on the straightish green path. They're kind of at a at an angle to you, but heading in the same direction. In a similar direction. Yeah. Should um, we? Maybe their math is off. Well, they don't have a artifact tracker, right? You hope they don't have an artifact tracker. Well, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, should we conceal our tracks? Is that something we can do, Russ? In this terrain, that should be quite easy. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Paige, I'm going to send Hewitt up to kind of keep an eye out while we're while we're traveling. Because okay. now that we know there are enemies in the area, I'd like to have some forewarning. Sure. So you send Hewitt up into the air, and uh, they circle around, and you can communicate with them for a mile. Yeah, and I won't have them leave that area because I want to make sure that I can communicate with them. Okay. Uh, so you're just having, I'm just having you do kind of circles in the air, in essence. Sure. So it's a clear, uh, unclouded night. Uh, a faint sliver of uh, moonlight lights up the trail. Actually, hang on. Let me check. Malaga is, of course, helping Ross conceal our tracks. Yes. Uh, there's, yes, there's only a faint sliver of moonlight from the waning moon uh, that uh, that lights up the the desert, and uh, Hewitt uh, gets pretty high up, so mm -hmm. she's got a pretty good field of view, mm -hmm. and uh, she says, "I see something," and uh, pushes an image through to your mind, mm -hmm. and you can see uh, it. It's kind of at the. She would have to go farther away to get a clear view, but sure. it's. Uh, a clearly some sort of camp and you see a fire a couple of fires how far is it away rough like if i had to guess and like i know it's going to be really rough i mean three four five miles okay sure yeah that, that's fair is it in our path <sighs> no again it seems somewhere off to the left of your path okay i think the thing and i think there's a thing camp about four or five miles that way m m it three to six miles can we tell if it's the creatures whose paths we crossed? I don't. I mean, maybe if Hewitt got closer, but I don't, I'm not interested in risking Hewitt for to get shot down by a Thean, whatever. It does seem ill-advised. Because <gasps> the Thans are familiar with familiars. So the they Thans might have them. are indeed familiar with familiars. So it's Ron, possible. you may have a point of inspiration. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. There might come a time when Hewitt has to have a mid-air duel Ooh. with a Thane familiar. Hot. Mm. So uh, maybe we should, can we trick him out with like uh, little blades to go on his feet? Or uh, just things to keep in mind. You know what? Hewitt's damage output is not uh, really of any concern. It's the fact that Hewitt can only take one hit point of damage. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it's nighttime. We've sort of got a lay of the land. On an ordinary travel day, we'd probably bed in for the night uh, around now and then start walking again 
like right before morning. I think that had been our strategy. Yep. Um, do we want to do that tonight, or do we want to just press on through the night and try and just get to it? They're very close. Um, I, I think if we travel when not expected, given how close they are, that might be a benef- benefit. I agree. I think it would be foolish to camp or they are so close. <laughs> and we're in good shape because we ate all that street vendor food from the city. <laughs> and you know, It was very spicy. Puts a real pep in your step. It yes. was amazing. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna we're just yeah, gonna. Yeah, Ross would have liked it. Vegetable content very low, meat content very high. <laughs> Unless you go to one of the carts that specifically spells to the uh, herbivores among the group. I have to say that when we pass back through, I'm going to buy one of those clay tagines to use at home. All right, so you're going to continue traveling through the night. It seems like uh, Mm -hmm. the thing to do. We did get a rest at the city. Is that right? Mm, Or did we not? You could have taken a short rest, but it wasn't enough time for a long rest. Okay. But I think we're, yeah, we we had the short battle with the trolls. But other than that, we're pretty much good. I I was just making sure my my state was correct, Mm because I feel like something big might be coming up. I don't know why. I don't know why. (laughs) Maybe that's Fine. just me. Oh, that's true. We should probably reflect a short rest on our sheets. I am. Um... What could go wrong? Done Dang. and done. Chat, y'all are knocking these contributions out. Woo! We are 400. Thank you, Brother pirate. Flounder. Thank you, Dan Goyette. And who was the other person? Dragon Slayer 19. Dragon Slayer 19. Hmm. All right. So uh, the sun starts coming up over the horizon and the, uh, the rocks in the desert start uh, uh, trailing long purple shadows behind them as the, the sun starts to rise. And uh, you've, you've checked, you think, You've gotten to the point where you're very close to the uh, artifact and you come through a series of rocks and you see uh, five kind of stone pinnacles coming up out of the the sand and they look really weird for a moment and then you kind of realize they look like a hand. (laughs) And when I say they look like a hand, I mean they look like a hand that's... 10, 30, 50, 60 feet across. So the so five like, pillars are just the fingers coming up out of the... Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like a massive statue of some sort. Sure. That's under the sand, potentially. Sure. Um, <laughs> that, let me just translate for the audience. That is Paige's way of saying yes. <laughs> Maybe sure. if we're lucky, the thing we're looking for is in the palm of the hand and not like on its toe ring. <laughs> <laughs> I assume I assume the thing is pointing roughly in the direction of this hand. Yes. Yes it is. Okay. So we'll continue on. Do we get any sort of verticality out of this thing? Uh yes. And it would it it kind of shows um like it's not pointing towards the center of the earth. Which is, you know, probably in your best interest. Yeah, I agree. Uh, So you get there and you're kind of in the sandy area of the palm. And uh, the the art of the uh, jar, the globe of water from the Tarcellus Fountain is now once again creating pure, perfect circle, green concentric circles of light. Ooh. It implies we're directly above it. Mm-hmm. We've been careful to uh, shield, so we're not just like a beacon in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does produce light, but it's light about the brightness of a candle. Right, and well, I've we... been hiding it for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Like a candle in a desert can be seen for a long time. It can. Time. It can. Fortunately, you've got complicated terrain. It's not just a flat plain because of the sand dunes. 
you've only got a limited distance that light will travel. Right. Um, How are we digging now? Is this what we're doing? Uh, we could dig if there's not a more magical solution. I think we should look around a little bit and see if there's any search around, see if we can find anything. Go from there. Uh, how are you searching? Just looking around with your eyeballs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just looking around with your eyeballs. It's rock and sand and small plants and scorpions and spiders and kangaroo mice and small stones, gravel. Maybe there's a magical entryway here. Sure. I'll cast uh, some detect magic. All right. When you cast detect magic, uh, the whole area glows as if faintly uh, suffused in magic. Typically, abjuration, conjuration, and transmutation, but don't hold me to that. Sure. Uh, abjuration, conjuration, transmutation. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, and as you cast the spell, some of the sand nearby swirls up into a figure that looks like an elven woman with vines in her hair. What did you do? And uh, the figure speaks and says, who are you that disturbed this place? Be gone. <laughs> uh, lady. You've made her angry. Shh. Shh. Are you done? Shh. My name is uh, Victor Toussaint. I am a member of the Aglarondian Foresters. Foresters. As are my companions. Uh, we have come here searching a for a item of importance to the security of Aglarond since the forces of Thay are also in the area and they wish to take it for their nefarious ends. The, the figure made out of sand seems to narrow her eyes and behind her a rank of three more uh, sand figures uh, arise out of the dust. Hmm. She uh, walks forward towards Victor. I will stand my ground. <laughs> okay. She gets right up in your personal space and kind of leans over next to you and goes, <laughs> Hmm. You do smell like Ken, though faintly. And I'm aware that the skull children are about. Who's skull children? We should start calling them that. <laughs> They're close. I mean, only a couple of miles away. I think it's only a matter of time till they discover this location. We encountered their path while traveling here, and my familiar scouted their saw their camp from a distance. They're not far. It is only a matter of time until they find this place. Victor, perhaps showing them your sword of elven kin might help convince them. Ah, uh, excellent idea, Russ. I will pull forth my unnamed blade and show mm -hmm. it to them. Uh, this was presented to me uh, for valor in battle to some degree. Um, <laughs> let's see, the wielder fell in, in battle and it was given to me. Hmm. And I've been carrying it to use against they. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I do think it's a ancient Aglarondian sword of some type. And it seems to like me a little bit. So She uh, holds out her hands uh, in a gesture indicating that she would like you to give her the sword. Oh, that's fine. I have no problem giving people my sword. Not point first, <laughs> ya boob. No, no. I, since, you know. She's made of sand. What's the worst that could happen? No, I was set talking about my bond with it. So, you know, oh, I can always okay. teleport it away if things get weird. So, yes, I will hand over my sword. Unless it likes her better than me. And then, of course... <laughs> Well, then you'll just be sad. You like <laughs> that's true. I mean, sometimes you just gotta let let things go. Uh, all right. So she um, she takes the sword into her hands, and sand kind of flows around it. And uh, all of a sudden, there's a burst of greenish energy, and it's bright. 
uh, clearly yeah. something that would travel. And when the flash fades, uh, there is an elven woman standing there with actual vines in her hair with small flowering uh, purple flowers in it. And you can smell like lush vegetation and humid air and, and a pleasant breeze. Uh, and she says, oh, yes, you are from Aglaron and you do have the blood. So magically, what just happened there, Paige? I'm watching. I have detect magic up right now. Sure, sure. Um, make me a. I know magic stuff. Just to give me an idea of how much information you truly glean. Okay, yeah, that's typical. <laughs> uh, so what you believe happened is that this uh, entity exists both here. Mm -hmm. And also in the Feywild simultaneously, mm. okay. which is a hell of a trick to pull off. Mm. And uh, by uh, touching the sword, a portal, this place became completely cotangent with the Feywild. We're doing a lot of math tonight. Yes. Magic is mostly math, to be it's honest. It's true. It's I mean, true. We, we Occasionally, we switch from a science-based role-playing uh, stream <laughs> to a math-based <laughs> role-playing stream. Uh, yes. So, uh, you feel like this place became cotangent with the Feywild, and when it did, her person became entirely one in the Feywild instead of simultaneously in both places. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, did her guards also arrive here in physicality, or just her? No, they still look like they still like figures of sand. Okay. Uh, so I can presume that she made the decision to, as opposed to was forced to, be here in physicality in some way. That is a thing you are free to assume, yes. Great. Um, I wonder if we can just give her the artifact, she can take it to the Feywild. Um, the... Uh, Another suitable theory that Wildfire might consider is that the three backup singers are not the same kind of thing she is. Sure, granted. Uh, hmm. Ooh, well, if you could... Sorry, I'm behind on this, but uh, uh, the Twitch is now telling me that we have a player inspiration from the Ooh. Ooh. chat. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. <laughs> All right. Um, where was I? Uh, uh, she says, yes, if you have this sword and it hasn't killed you yet, then it must believe that you are in some degree worthy of it. <laughs> you should have seen what it did to that guy. Are you pointing at Ross? Yes. Um, like, she's got super serious business face on, but, like, one corner of her lip just <laughs> kind of goes twitch uh, up in what a micro expression of a smile. What? My understanding it is it didn't kill me either, mind you. <laughs> Truth, but you didn't push the issue either, did you? <laughs> no, because I'm smarter than that. <laughs> that remains to be seen. Uh, Have I tried going after the sword since? Brother Flounder, what what do you guys want to tell Brother Flounder and anybody in our chat who might not remember what happened the last uh, time? When Victor bonded with the sword, uh, it took him a little longer than normal, and for a while, we were waiting for him. Degree, anyone we were who about him. anyone who uh, tried to check in on Victor got summarily punted from the tent. I experienced it. Ross experienced it. It was great fun. I, I was, was actually like... thinking of setting up a roller coaster ride, and then it ended. So it's a real shame. I was unconscious the whole time, but they told me about it afterwards. Uh, also, Coda, you may have an inspiration point for your idea to hand the sword to the uh, figure. I was just happy to remind Ron that he had a <laughs> elven sword that was most definitely not controlling his brain this entire time. <laughs> uh right so um yeah she was talking to you and she was saying something i keep getting wrong uh, we were we were we were commenting on the fact that the sword also did not kill me mm -hmm. right right 
Uh, she says, well, if the sword hasn't killed you yet, then it must believe you are in some degree worthy. We could give the mythal to you. It is a rather heavy burden for any that are not... And she cuts a glance at Malagar of the Aglarondian Elvenkin. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, do you mean it metaphorically or is it literally heavy? We're pretty strong. I meant spiritually. Mm -hmm. So Paige, have I ever heard of a mythal before? Make me and I, have I ever heard of a mythal before? I would accept religion, history, or arcana. I'll use our player inspiration and roll arcana. There's my arcana, Ooh, there's my history. Look at you go. Wait, did I roll? I do not see a roll in roll 28. Yeah, I, I, I've not seen yours either. I got the plugin turned on. Well, I'll just. All right. There you go. All right. So I got a seven and a nine, and I add a mighty two. So fair enough. Fair I have enough. a 19 history. Okay. So, historically speaking, a mythal is a magic item created by a group of uh, mages generally high elven mages um, to permanently alter the structure of the weave, the skein of magic that surrounds uh, that surrounds this world. Uh, and it would alter the very fundamental laws of magic in that place. Hmm. Um, and it was uh, very well known that upon a time Aglarond had been protected by something called the Elder Oak Mythal, uh, which um, uh, was supposed to be somewhere in the forests of the Yearwood. Mm -hmm. And at some point in time, it wasn't. And it is currently no longer protected uh, in that way. For a long time after the Mythal was gone, uh, the symbol, uh, who was a very powerful magic user, protected Aglarond in much the same way as a living Mythal. Right, he's the one who for eventually formed the council on his death. She, but yes. She, right, sorry. Uh, right. Which, and so, now that the symbol is dead... Which which mythal is it? She, uh, she, she kind of gives Malagar a suspicious glance again and says, This is the Elder Oak mythal. Uh, an ancient king carried it here to try and alter the shape of magic in this place to defeat the armies of that. He mm. was not successful. Mm. So, right. Did, isn't that a history we would know? I think I remember from our reading maybe. there was like a failed invasion of Thay or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. This is, so uh, uh, an ancient king of Aglaron decided to take the battle to Thay and did very poorly. He was routed, uh, his, some of his family escaped, but he was killed and lost. And I, he I, just sit here, to... I sit here and nod at all of these words like they make total sense to everyone. Mm -hmm. And he just decided to leave it here. Well, he only had time to carve a giant stone statue. Right. And no one bothered to come and disturb it in all this time. Hey, Paige, I... So, if she actually has the mythal, we for sure cannot... I mean, she has the mythal. We for sure can't... Did not mean to impugn your your, your integrity. Um, we can't let it fall in the hands of Thay. Um, that would be bad. I agree, uh, but given the ancient laws of magic, I can't touch it. Right. Mm, that's frustrating. I was hoping you could just take it to the Fey world. <laughs> Do our work for us. As well, we could, could we I take am, it to the Fey world? I am no descendant of that king. 
Could we take it to the Feywild? Aglaron's far from here. The mythal was constructed to protect Aglarond. If mm -hmm. it were taken to the Feywild, there are many powerful Fey that would want to collect it for themselves. That's fair. That's uh, fair. That's true. And it probably would glow like a beacon over there. How mm. can we travel with it? Something that, that is that powerful without being immediately noticed. I just uh, don't know. The, uh, if we kept it in air. We haven't noticed it here. That's true. Although it might be shielded in some way. Are you sh are you shielding it in any way? Or is it the magic of the mythal that is keeping it from being found by the Thanes? Both. Uh, okay. As well as a touch of residual energy from the Feywild. However, she points to the, the stones around her that kind of look like a hand. There are other powers that are trying to get it. They move very slowly, but inexorably. Wait. That's the hand of something trying to try to grab it. Yeah. Wow. Huh. I That's... look sternly at the giant fingers. <laughs> that is impressively monumental. You got to get pretty up pretty early in the morning to grab something with a giant stone hand before Victor Toussaint gets to it. <laughs> so, uh, what what? magical requirements would there be for traveling with the mythal? I, I assume it, can, it will not allow itself to be put in an extra-dimensional space or anything like that? If you put it into an extra-dimensional space, it is entirely possible you will not get it back. Uh, that could make it quite um, visible to <sighs> powers from beyond this place that would like to have it for themselves. Of course. I mean... Just for purely illustrative purposes? Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Uh. <laughs> I mean, where are we having this conversation? Are we in, in the midst of the uh, hand? Yeah. Yeah, or we definitely we... were in the midst of the hand. Paige, since you have asked us to, for illustrative pur purposes, had us on this nice gridded map here i'm gonna go ahead and like summon goose because i i feel like i'm not a part of this conversation necessarily so i've i've moved to taking kind of an active watch on our surroundings okay the uh gold markers one two and three are the elven woman's backup seniors sure so can the mythal be magically transported teleportation and whatnot uh, no. No, it could not. Hmm. That is one of the safeguards built into it to keep it where it should be, but the creators weren't, uh, never envisioned that some man would choose to take it onto a battlefield. To be fair, I suppose, if he had won there, he might have wiped out the nation of Thay, uh, completely. But he did not. Yes. I think our best option is to, I guess, just take it and start running across the desert, more or less. It would seem we have little other choice. I can't think of any better specific idea. The mythal is such a powerful item that a lot of things I would normally do with an item like this aren't, aren't in play. Maligar, I think some sort of muting magic has <laughs> afflicted me. Yes. Oh, good. He fought it off. Yes. <laughs> Made a save. I, I, I was just saying, it, it seems a tad informal to just abscond with it like uh, thieves in the night, which, well, we're not stealing anything. We're just trying to transport it to safety, right? Oh, yeah. so hang on. Back up. I had given you the historical version of this. Yes. Wildfire had a 10 arcana, no, an 11. All right, so with those arcana rolls, you know that mythals are powerful, magical, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and generally, the reason why they are so powerful is because uh, 
one, some, a few, all of the circle of magi that create them must agree to voluntarily give their lives hmm. and their immortal spirits to power this mythal. Hmm. So then, which... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, then it's imperative we don't let it fall into Thay's hands. So who's a, who of us can carry it? Is it only Victor? Is it only a son of man? Do I have to have it carried on the end of my sword like a uh, like an egg race from school? Uh, if you have a bond with the ones who are kin of this ancient king, then that should be sufficient. Having if... said that, it could also be carried by a sufficiently powerful mage, even... Uh, without respect to the mythal's wishes of its own. Right. Uh, it I... is in a greatly weakened state. Oh, the minute it was uprooted, it mm -hmm. was in a greatly weakened state, but still strong enough potentially to have turned the tide of battle. Is it here? Should I try and pick it up and see what happens? It is here. I think we should just abscond with it like thieves in the night. I think at this point, that's our best option. Are you tied to the mythal? Will you sort of come with us when we go? I am not. I am uh, a protector spirit of this ancient king whose name I will not utter. I mean, if I had ears, Paige, they would perk up at the mention of spirits. I know, I know. <laughs> I am a, uh, a spirit of the Feywild, a protector of this ancient fool of king, whose name I shall never utter, and it seemed like the best monument to his memory to try and keep this uh, foolishness out of the hands of those that should not have it. But you can't travel. She can't, can't touch, she can't can't touch the touch missile. It. I'm not kin of the king. Well, I know, but you can't follow us if we take it. Uh, if it moves from here, then my duty will have been discharged, and I will return to the Feywild. Hmm. So, how do you feel about that? I am forever shamed by this person's actions. Mm. Uh, and if I go back to the Feywild, I can con contemplate my shame in peace. That, that is a good thing. So, Victor, I think either you or I or Ross could probably pick up the mythal, given that, that we are all bound. Uh, I forget our organization name. The Foresters. Foresters, thank you. <laughs> We're all bound Foresters. Playing yeah. the role of Kodab tonight. <laughs> Given that we're all bound foresters, I think it is very likely that any of us could could take it up. And I don't think, you know, if one of us falls, I think one of the other ones could take it up. Well, I'm eager to uh, test your that theory. I mean, when you say that, that one must have a bond with the king's king, uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, an oath of loyalty would be sufficient. Hmm. And a serious oath of loyalty. I have the scars to prove my oaths. While a uh, while a uh, wildfire and Victor though are coming up with their their plan, so I'm just gonna kind of come up to the the spirit and uh, you um wouldn't happen to know if there are any other. <laughs> elemental spirits of the desert nearby. I have been tasked to commune with them. <laughs> I am not a spirit of this desert. I am a spirit of the Feywild. Mm. But if you are serving Aglarond, I can offer you my guidance. And what would that be? She reaches a hand forward towards you. I will take her hand. Immediately, vines shoot out of nowhere to cover 
both Ross and the figure. Uh, Ross, you are filled with a wild energy. It makes you want to run around and jump and kick up your heels like a colt in the springtime. <laughs> and uh, you see a lush green forest around you. And uh, you find yourself running through it as fast as you can, leaping 10, 15, 20 feet high over the branches. And uh, you have entered the form of a great stag that is racing through the Feywild. Ooh. Gold and silver motes of light drift back from your from your uh, metallic sheened antlers. I'm going to relish in this this new form, and I'm going to run the Feywilds page. All right. Uh, so the the day stretches in front of you. You can hear wolf spirits howling uh, behind you. And, uh, and you pay them no mind. They are way too slow to catch up with you. And uh, as, day shifts, as day shifts to night and the sky turns pink and purple and orange and then finally a beautiful rich blue and the stars bloom above you in a brightness like you've never experienced before, uh, you realize that you have a herd of your own folk to keep safe. And you, uh, you end up having some scraps with the wolf spirits and impaling several of them on your horns till blood drips down from them. And uh, you uh, run to the top of a, of a cliff overlooking a valley of the Feywild. And as the sun comes up, and you trumpet your call of superiority over, over all of this. Ma. <laughs> no, it's when an elk trumpets, it's a. I a, said what I meant, Paige. <laughs> do the do the trumpet from Valheim, Mike. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> Valheim deer make me want to kick puppies. Because <laughs> the Valheim deer are horrible monsters. <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> no, these are not like that at all. Uh so uh, at that, the uh, sun reflects into your eyes from the stream below. And uh, when the brightness fades from your eyes, you are once again in the seeing sands. And uh, a, a whole bunch of leaves just fall down from all around you. The rest of y'all, this takes like five seconds. I but Rosh, you feel like you've lived for a, a day at least as Goose this great... Has definitely spirit. sprouted like this beautiful foliage motif on her oh yeah like she is all up in the fey wild right now oh she was there with you the whole time in goose form i mean there 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 were fey dragon do they still exist oh yeah okay she's definitely the form of a fey dragon and i'm gonna add fey commune with the fey wild Ooh. spirits to my list here so for those keeping track at home, water, earth, Feywild, which I think is close enough to heart, yeah, pretty, pretty soon I'm going to be saddle, uh, summoning Captain Planet here. If you return for, <laughs> with a tiny uh, flute to play. <laughs> I like it. No, I, I return with the uh, pride of being a badass prey that only the best of hunters could take down. Did you learn sexomancy while you were out there? <laughs> no, God, no. That is that is so far. That is uh, satyr territory. I'm going uh, to 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 Silvio. Mm -hmm. Silvio. Mm -hmm. Right, and you're standing there. You have a, a whole pile of leaves around you, and uh, the the elven woman steps back. That is the advice I have to offer. <sighs> I will take it into consideration. Thank you. And I will show her a, a deep, uh, uh, not really a bow. I don't think that they really classify as a bow, but very similar. Curtsy. Yes, thank it's you. A, it's, the, it's the head spin. He, head, he, it's like a break dance move, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's Mal very, it's very popping. I'm just saying. Malaga does does the robot. Ooh. And, yeah, pops and, and locks. My neck pouch. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh. We should return. 
shit, what is it called? The, uh... Mythal. The Mythal to Aglorond with all due haste. We are being hunted. But if the advice is being understood, we will not fall to our hunters. Let's hope that. That is that that's a promising prophecy, I guess. I, I think we should take the mythal and go. Yes. Uh I would like to try and Hold the mythal now. Uh, she gestures and uh, makes kind of an up gesture. And floating up from out of the sands is a single acorn. It's tiny. It's like this. The acorn and a little leaf attached to it. Whole thing like this. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I will not underestimate it. And with full strength, I will attempt to hold it in my hand. Right. I will need a charisma saving throw, sir. Excellent. Also, Malagar, with your passive perception, yes. you are convinced that the fingers are a little bit closer. I yeah. mean, because they are. <laughs> well, I, I managed to get a 14 with all things considered. Isn't isn't bad for a finger? No, that's a great, great charisma saving throw for you. Uh, the, uh, the spirit and ancient majesty of this drives you towards your knees. It feels like this tiny acorn weighs hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Like your fist is slammed, back of your fist is slammed to the ground under the weight of it. I try and lift it up. Like how strong are you? I mean, 19. I can lift a few hundred pounds, but I can't lift hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So you you manage to lift it to about the level of your knees? Hmm. Um, and it, it causes a strain. All right. So it hasn't rejected me, but it hasn't accepted me either. Hey, Ross, why don't you give it a shot? All right. I will uh, approach the acorn as it is an acorn, and I will try to pick it up. All right. All right I'll, I'll, like, tip it into your hand. I will require from you a uh, charisma saving throw with disadvantage. I love the look on Coda's face right now. I wish I could put thing. it in a bottle. Like, I'm trying to remember which one of these is a it's, disadvantage. It's alt. There we go. It's control, I, sorry. I give you mm. a five. Ooh. Shit, okay. I should have used my inspiration on that. Oh, well, it still would have been a five. Hey. Uh, all right. So uh, you are driven to your knees and fall unconscious. Ross drops. Oh. Polak steer. Hmm. Well, we still got goose, so we're fine. It's fine. I go back to my dream about being a badass elk. So, <laughs> all right, wildfire, <laughs> get up, get up. Bruce just going down his checklist here. I'll try it. Well, she said a powerful wizard has an edge, so um, you know, think wizardy thoughts. Are there any wizardy things you want to do at this thing before you try and pick it up? Um. Try. So I... Probably still have detect magic going. Like, it's probably all the magic that doesn't help me. Um, uh, I will focus my mind on uh, on Aglaron and on my old master uh, Elaine, and on the kind of the the vow I made to the foresters, and try to drive everything else from my mind, but that vow and that okay. life. You can make me a saving throw uh, normal. Thanks. Can I use my advantage on him? Oh, nope, it's too late. <laughs> Dice done did hit the roll. Uh, all right, so it's heavy and it weighs a lot, but you manage to be able to hold it. It's like holding a bowling ball. Sure. So I, holding fast. like a heavy bowling ball like sure. 20 pounds. Sure, sure. I can travel with this. It will not be comfortable, but I can travel with this. I try and pick up Wildfire while he's holding it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, ain't, ain't nothing but a thing. You can pick up Wildfire just like you normally could. He is 20 okay. pounds heavier, though. Not really. Only metaphysically, only for him. Oh, so that's 
That was good. I mean, because practically speaking, carrying wildfire might be practical in the future, especially if, you know, someone were to change into a Rosszilla. No! <laughs> I, know. I like also Tiger's uh, idea. We put wildfire into an extra dimensional space with his hand hanging out. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. And then we just go. We're good. Uh, Bologna, you start your next D&D game with a point of inspiration for wizardy things. So fireball <laughs> ten times in a row. I mean, that's fair. I'm a Chef's little kiss. shocked Wildfire did not just try burning it all down. <laughs> now nah, this is a pretty powerful artifact. Um, Wildfire. When Wildfire picks it up, mm -hmm. your vision uh, blurs and fades and you only see the Feywild around you right now. Like you see oh Ross there and Vic and Victor mm -hmm. and Malagar. And there was a rock over there, which you can still kind of see. But here it looks like it's covered in moss. And sure. is this going to happen the entire way? I say looking at our, our the guide spirit who might or might not be here any longer that I've picked it up. In fact, she is no longer there. Uh. Hmm. Wait, I look at how the are her backup singers there? Nope. <sighs> what are you seeing there? It looks like the Feywild. Oh. Pick like the Feywild. That's, That's not great. Actually, actually means I probably don't even need to suggest microdosing on our trip back. <laughs> oh, good lord, no. I'm uh, I got all of it right now. <laughs> Excellent. So, so you have noticed that your uh uh friend is no longer there we're not being protected anymore by the way everybody so we should Let's probably get, get out, of the move on. get out of the hand what <laughs> really the hand crushes forward as it as it tries to catch all of you i will need dexterity saving throws from the lot of you you know she could have mentioned that she was holding that back that would have oh, been okay page zero i'm going to use my inspiration on i'm this unconscious one. Oh, that's, that's true. true. Ross is definitely caught. Goose, Goose might be able to get you out, though. You should, yeah, she should make one for oh. Goose. Why is that not working? Said, or she might just be able to save herself. You said that's a dexterity? Yep. Uh, Goose got a save. rolled a dex check wildfire. It might be the same thing. No, I didn't. I rolled oh, yeah. a save. It says save on roll 20. Oh, sorry. Malaga oh. rolled a dex check. No, I, I was trying to roll with a... Why is it... I It showed the green plus. I don't understand no. how roll twenty works. You're, right now, there's an advantage roll on the on my screen for you, Malagar. Okay. The most recent roll was an advantage roll. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, Victor, you do not make it. Ross, you do not make it. However, Wildfire, Goose, and Malagar slip uh, between the fingers, and this thing goes like. Arr. I wonder like how do this long into. Um, initiative order or do you just want to just like say what we're doing i think just say what we're doing unless it that that feels fun to me so um everybody do things malaga is going to try and grab ross and drag him away from this terrible grasping hand usually i enjoy this kind of thing but not today and too much sand oh <laughs> right also <laughs> It, it, the sand ruins everything. It yeah. really does. Listen, I enjoy many things. I do not enjoy sand. Uh, it will be 27 points of damage for those who failed the save. Mm. You made the save. You got off Scott free. Okay. Um, yes, Bologna, that would in fact, in fact say, have saved everything. It, there were zero high fives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so Malagar is going to drag Ross out of here. Make me a, an I drag the unconscious lizardman from the stony grip of this thing roll. That sounds like a strength athletics check because you're grrr, flex your muscles. A good thing this is the thing I'm really bad at. <laughs> <laughs> what, is there still a player inspiration out there? Do you want to use it? Uh, I have. Uh, I think Victor used it. I used it. Can I give him mine? Yeah. I will give you mine. Reaching out from the dead? I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Stop trying to kill me. From the, did, from the great beyond. Did taking 27 damage wake him up? Yes. 
Oh, it did? Oh, yeah. you you got to tell me these things. Oh, babe. I'm so sorry. You're awake now. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and life ultimate. is pain. <laughs> ultimate, well, I'm still going to help you. Against my, you know, better judgment. Well, then you might just be giving him advantage on a roll he makes. Oh, oh well, you, also true. You roll pretty I, well, so maybe. We all right. Can so it. with yes. that, you uh, you pull uh, Ross out of the grip of the stony hand. Uh, Let's say we're on this side now. Sure, uh, Ross, you are scratched up and missing some scales, and you're a little. Uh, perhaps uh, bleary from waking up from the vision, but you out. You've had a bad trip. I mean, Paige, what, what kind of damage do fey dragons do in the page verse Because, like, oh. Goose is definitely, like, gnawing on part of this thing, trying to get me free. Sure. They normally do, like, sleep and enchantment type stuff. Yeah. Maybe poison. Uh... Uh, just something to think about is we definitely run from this giant hand. Well, I'm I'm gonna try and squeeze my way out. Does anyone Does want to help? Does she have little yeah, non-functional will, will... butterfly wings? Absolutely. I, I reach forward and, and try to pull Victor out. One hand holding his hand, one, one other hand holding the mythyl and trying to summon as much power as I can from it to help get Victor <laughs> out. Not that I have an idea how what that means. Uh, Sounds good. But I'm a fool. A fairy so. dragon would have uh, euphoria breath. So, Ooh. Hmm. Malagar will instruct you in the proper use of that uh, at your next, next long rest. <laughs> um. Right. So you. So what did you? I want to hear that again in my ears intentionally. I reach good. out to help to help Victor, and in my other hand, I'm still holding the mythal. And did I hear you say that you were trying to channel energy? For yeah, because like, you? yeah. Well, I'm trying to. If there's, if this thing can help us, this thing was, I don't know. This thing's a protective magical thing. I like protective magic. I like magic. You know, <laughs> I'm a joke, wizard. Joke. You know what it I feels can handle like. It. Your smile your cannot audience. get more wide, Joe. Yeah, I've gone to total. I can handle it. at this point. Y'all know how it feels when you, as a DM, set something up. And you're not sure if it's ever going to go off, but then it does. Paige, I, Wildfire is here to do that thing. Okay. So, um, where was that uh, amulet that you found? Where Where was that on your person? Uh, uh, it's probably like, uh, like you know, on like probably around my neck or on my like on my shoulder or something. I don't really wear necklaces, so it's probably like like hung over my shoulder. Every morning I wake up and I'm like, is today the day I should just preemptively kill Wildfire? <laughs> I say no, not today. All right. <laughs> you, so... you do the same thing for Ross. <laughs> Your morning ritual is very weird, Victor. Yeah. He's to and... the Batman. He writes down <laughs> how he would kill everyone today. That's a lot of responsibility being done. <laughs> so, uh,. As you try and draw upon the power of the mythal, mm -hmm. uh, there is a tremendous explosion of fire and hatred from your shoulder. Ow. Um, I think I would like... <sighs> Man, I could justify nearly any kind of save for this. It's I'm, the, I'm, I'm the best at id saves, Paige, so I would prefer an id save. Yeah, I think I can justify every kind of save except an id save. Oh! Uh, Smack! Yeah. I'm second best at wisdom. Well, I, I was gonna go for wisdom next, so let's call this a wisdom save. Yeah, that is not gonna do it. Tailed it. Oh, go ahead. What could go wrong? I mean, Victor would have just rolled better on his charisma save earlier. This wouldn't have happened. There you go. <laughs> well, I would have rolled better if... Oh, um, man. That's, that's shiny. That's you know shiny. What? That I, is I, a I, shitty I agree with Joe roll. Here. Joe, if, if Victor had done better, I wouldn't have fallen unconscious and taken 27 damage mm -hmm. from a giant hand. If Bellwood okay. was here, I would have passed the Christmas save. <laughs> That's true. It's, true. It's, it's entirely true. You were one it's point shy. True. I hated it. For it okay, Paige, so I, I kind of like shrug off my cloak to get the damn amulet away from me that just exploded. Yes. yes. Uh, well, it is not there anymore. 
Oh, well, uh, cool. That's why it exploded. Yes. Um, Ow. you don't even see debris from it around. Mm. Uh, uh, so, it... did was there an actual explosion or like the, the damage it was like psychic damage or was it like no was it it actual was a, fire it was a combination of like fire and force damage okay don't forget the hate so actually so... no it it would have been uh yeah fire and force but it's it's empowered in a way that it goes through resistance <laughs> sure I, 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 assume, I assume so i assume yeah so. Um, it was I wasn't even going to try to argue soul. for that. Yes. Directly to your soul. Ooh. Yes. Uh, and, um, like, you feel like something has... So, you, so the weave of magic surrounds <laughs> everything mm -hmm. in the Forgotten Realms. Awesome. And it surrounds every person. Like, the personal weave of magic around you is part of the grander weave of the tapestry of magic through ever the yep. thing. I'm and very so like familiar each, with it. Each stone has its own uh, metaphysical gravity that kind of warps and shapes the fabric. Uh, every living thing and some many lawn living things produce their own sort of mini skeins of magic fibers around them that are part of the weave. That exploded. It hurts you physically. Uh, and you feel like it has twinged, uh, cut, severed, twisted, um, rearranged some of the schemes of magic that make wildfire wildfire. Oh my. Did, mm. did Paige just cut Joe or uh, wildfire off from the weave? Oh no. shit! No, I said some of the threads, not all all of the threads he can no longer cast fire magic <laughs> so i explode <laughs> <laughs> yeah but weirdly that explosion is all water it's yeah, very strange yeah. very, yeah. very strange. refreshing this um, <laughs> is this very calming everyone uh, enjoys it greatly uh now i would like an arcana check to see how you pull upon the magic of this mythal. Sure. Your traditional value for arcana checks. Mm -hmm. All right, so with great skill, uh, you manage to try and use the big, uh, thick, like, uh, anchor cable size mm -hmm. um, uh, weave of magic around this mythal. Mm -hmm. Tiny, tiny thing, physically, but when you look at it from the weave, like, it makes a huge gravity well in the weave. Um, uh, you reach out your hand to try and grab Victor. Mm -hmm. and... oh, I think I'm already out by this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, th this is all happening like oh, instantly. Okay. Uh, the the sure. propulsion from the explosion shot Victor like a missile <laughs> yeah. from the hand. I thought right. Wildfire was like having a moment and I just kind of squid squiggled my way out. <laughs> No, this is all happening instantly. Okay. Um, but while, Joe, have you ever, like, uh, been doing something and, like, completely dislocated a joint or felt a bone have break? Not. I thankfully have not. Ugh. Oh, no, I have, I have actually felt a bone break. It is pretty awful. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it more worse off, often than the pain is just the feeling that something's not right. It's different. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels like that in your magic. Mm. Paige, I will let you know, as you are doing awful things to wildfire mm -hmm. here, uh, chat has seen fit to give you a inspiration. Mm. Well, thank you, my <laughs> friends. Oh, it's gelatinous rube. Thank you, gelatinous rube. Yes, and I mean, this one was, was 9,000 viewer points, so it was it was a huge push from, like, Almost everyone. <laughs> yeah, nice stuff. I also know that Brother Flounder has taken the lead as our top bit sponsor. Ooh, excellent. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so, right. Vines uh, appear out of nowhere in a pulse of pink and green energy, and they wrap around Victor and yank him out of this. Uh, with a giant's strength, depositing him without uh, any any trouble on the sand at your feet. 
Hmm. And then the fist who just going <laughs> goes start sinking under the sand. Hey, hey, Victor. Yes. I don't often say this, and functionally, I never say this. I think I just done fucked up. Uh, well, I mean, I appreciate you <laughs> using magic to get me out of the hand. What happened? Why do you have regrets? Did you, like, burn out the mythal doing that? Because I'm probably not worth it in the balance of things. Wait, wait. No. Malaga, Malaga has a little bit of training. Did he notice anything untoward happening uh, when he looked back to see uh, whatever it is that was going on with Wildfire? Because he seemed to have a moment back there. <laughs> I mean... Uh, anybody who is a spellcaster or not can make me an arcana check to get kind of a feel for what's going on in the weave. Because if he broke a bone, I, I feel like that's a thing that I could look for. I mean, as... I, I, I've, I've just woken up from being magically uh, unconscious and there are explosions going off all around me. Right. Like, this is just I am how you ready wake for up. battle right this now. This is just how you wake up, Ross. It really isn't. My dragon is a fucking butterfly. Like everything is <laughs> like this she is, is some like sort of a beautiful kind of blue green color and has blue and green wings with black lines and then some pops of bright pink and bright yellow in them. And her eyes are kind of large and swirly, and she's got like very sweet smelling breath right now. Glistening beautifully in the explosion that is wildfire. Mm-hmm. Sounds good does, to me. Does the mythal feel any different, Paige? No. Okay. Still equally as heavy? Oh, yeah. Mm. Malaga has a Night School 11. <laughs> <laughs> Admiral. Admirable. Uh, yes. Um, like... Uh... Imagine what would happen if you took a bowling ball size sphere of like, mm. I don't know, what are some of the new ones? One of those super heavy elements that finally get to the Island of Stability, those yes. super heavy transactinide things. Mm. And you drop, sure. And you <laughs> drop that off of a 12 story building onto a concrete um, sidewalk below. Uh, Wildfire's personal magic kind of looks like what that concrete would look like. Mm -hmm. You don't seem okay, but I don't think we have time to get into this right Should now. Should we be leaving yes. before that explosion draws the attention of the Thay? Yes, also, this giant hand that just tried to crush us. Is after the after the head if the hand closes, does it do anything further? It starts sinking under the soil. Or right. Yeah, that, that, that's not good. Well, that's... I didn't say it was good. Okay, let's go. Yep. Okay. Uh, even before you can um, really uh, get moving, there is a great sweep of wings overhead with a sound like uh, uh, great sails of a great boat and billowing canvas. Shit. Mm. Oh, it's probably uh, the Griffins, right? To, to yeah. save yes, it. it's the Griffin Riders are coming to save you. Mm. That's how that works, right? You, you get yeah. them up into the place you need it to be and then the Griffins come in and you're, boom, you're Short done. Cut. I mean, as, as long as I don't look up, they might be the Griffins, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's entirely possible it could be the Griffins, yes. Uh, it's everyone's not. everyone's Ch injured right now, right? Chat is demanding that Wildfire fireball them. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. I mean, he might implode or something. Do you still have the thing? Yes, I still have the mythal. What does yeah. it look like, Paige? An acorn. A an bright acorn? green acorn. That's right, an acorn. I didn't know if maybe it now looked like it demand like acorn or something. <laughs> yeah, what is it now look like? An what? Adorable little horn. No, 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 no. Yes. It, no, it blew that thing up, but good. I took all that damage. That looks like a, a dead dragon with a person on it. Yup. 
I like mm. that less. I mean, Paige, I am definitely, when we see it fly over, I am moving to juxtaposition myself between my party and it. Ooh, juxtaposition. Fancy. Okay, yes. Oh, God. What? No, I'm just saying it's unpleasant. What's going oh, on? Yes. Um, what is going on is that this thing comes roaring out of the uh, of the day because it's morningish, um, and uh, I'm looking for the combat music and cannot find it. There we go. Um, comes roaring out of the day towards you with the sun. Uh, peeping through the vast holes in its wings where the leathery tissue has completely rotted away. And uh, it roars and opens its mouth and uh, a huge bolt of... Which the fuck energy did I decide? Probably fire. The light. Maybe. What is... I mean, the... On the screen, it's a skeletal blue dragon. Yeah, well, I was limited to the number of tokens because I wasn't <laughs> going to look all over for them. Hang on a second. Objects may appear more blue on stream. <laughs> yes. They blue than they appear in real life. Why, am I, just... why am I all the way over here? Because that's where you went to safety. No. Oh. But why is I mean, Rosso over there then? Like I, I moved to put myself between the dragon as it was. Coming. Oh, okay. Well, I would imagine like Victor and I are down here, probably outside the hand area. Yeah, we're definitely outside the hand area. I, I kind of imagine, and Paige can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I kind of imagine that the hand is now mostly like a fist in this area rather than being yes, open. Yes, yes. Well, I, I don't have a, all the graphics for like a hand like this, a hand like this, and a hand like that. So. Page. If I was, if I had had more time, if I didn't have to do actual science today during work hours, I would have Gross. taken pictures of my yeah. hand like this, like this, and then like this. It would have been awesome, like a flip book. <laughs> right, right. But instead, uh, instead, I did work. But yeah, that's importantly, if you would have done the one like this, that's <laughs> you, sir. You, sir. You get a point of inspiration. <laughs> oh wait, also. I think's happening. Yes, huh? I'm. I'm trying to remember which one it was. Okay, so we're. This is. This seems like a bad situation. We're in the spot here. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Yes, and hold. <laughs> just hang on for a second. I thought I had spec this out, and then I don't like the way it looks. They might so be able to talk them down. Yeah, I think so. I think. I mean, you know, ultimately they're just really friendly. Maybe they could fly us back to Aglarond. I mean, they the Thaeans are renowned for their their uh, peace their negotiations. They're we really just they're just trying sure to run the Victor, show them some leg. <laughs> oh, they've all got they've all got those scraggly, uh, pebbly bits on them now. They don't have mm. the clean lines I did in my youth. Malagar, show them your leg. There we go. Sure. Yeah, that's some leg. Ooh, I mean. Oh, no, your leg, not the leg you have in that bag. Uh, I mean, Paige claims that there is a breath weapon coming out of this thing. I'm not so convinced at this point. Like, there will be. Just hang okay, on a, a wait, minute. Wait, 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 We're whoa, just whoa, sitting here whoa, yelling Mike, at each other. Mike, Mike, are you taunting the GM right now? Yeah, this seems like a bad... Because you can get right off the stream. Like a bad time. <laughs> yeah. I'll delete you. I'm going to... Uh, thingy to bleach you right now. It'll just make it safer yeah, for all of us. It would make it way too hard for you to reset so back much, up. Yeah, it's so much work. Um, <laughs> yes, I just wanted to. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, let me add one of those. Check and I think check. I can mute you though pretty easily. Ooh. Okay. Yes, it is light. <laughs> very, very frightening. Galileo. I am. Galileo. All right, 60 Galileo, Galileo. Okay, so I, I, just everyone knows I'm about to fall unconscious. Yes. Oh, I, right. I already took all the damage. I know. Technically self-inflicted. Uh, GM inflicted, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm just is you need, like, real <laughs> healing, though. Not just, well, let's, listen, we'll, no, we'll... No. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm going to fall unconscious, guaranteed. Yes, yes. I get hit by this, I will be unconscious. Well, just, I mean, we're far away. They might just kill Ross. Oh my god. That'd be great. Oh my just, god. I love yeah. how absolutely nerdy our chat is right now. <laughs> I 
Paige, I just want you to know, as yes. you're setting up this this thing that's going to murder us all, uh-huh. I can't even look at it anymore. Fair. Our, our chat seems to be arguing about the density of different elements. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no <laughs> argument. There's a periodic table. It would yes. Come. <laughs> They're discussing, right. discussing. They're with... discussing, oh, they're, they're, they're discussing the they're island of stability is what they're discussing. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that's very cool. I would like to get in on that discussion if I was Page focus. Uh, no, no, Page, you've got right. stuff to do. I know, I know. Or, I mean, or you could just not lighting bolt us, that's fine too. No, no, no. Rick, everybody run while the Draco Lich is discussing <laughs> the island of stability. Right? <laughs> this is now a chemistry stream. <laughs> I'm in. Like, I remember Wildfire... Uh, at no point in time is this not a science stream. <laughs> That's true. Truth. I have a whole oh. bunch of animated AoE elements, and I cannot find the one I want. It's okay. We're just here comp- contemplating our impending doom. Yeah. Maybe you might have to just uh, draw it on the board or whatever. I bought these things for a reason, damn it. All right. to, to, to look through them dejectedly <laughs> while we all go like this. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> oh, it's All so right. cute. Oh, so, oh, that's fine. I'm glad you found it. <laughs> yes. Oh. I'm terrified. <laughs> that, was, that was worth every penny you paid for it. Paige, I go up and give this Traco Lich a hug. It's so cute. You did the best it's you okay, could. It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's Breath Weapon. It's so cute. I'm glad you think so. We're not going. I to mean, Paige, I'm going to be long. unconscious oh, here, so I don't know what you want from me. Oh God! What? When did it grow like ten times? Ah! Oh! Oh! Ah! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> I like, like this line. Missile. I'm okay with this line. I'm okay I with this line. You shouldn't taunt Paige so much. Ma- Malaga is feeling a way about this. Oh! Hmm. I, I thought that was I was hidden behind the meat of the palm, and yet. Here we are. There is a giant fist right there. There's not, though. It closed and sunk into the sand. Right. How fast is it sinking? Fast. It, mm. it closed fast enough to, that we literally got damaged, you mm. know. Giant oh, palm oh, speed. I... This thing just keeps getting five bigger. Feet. I don't know. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, God. So it is only five feet wide. I am very sad about this. Uh, Who's it going to touch then? Can I get Wildfire in Victor? I feel like I can. Yeah, ordinarily with lines, you can get basically two adjacent squares. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to look like that, but it won't let snap. Sure. I, it insists on snapping differently, but it's going to be like that. Sure. So it's Ross and Wildfire and Victor. Oh, boy. Yep, and Goose. All right. Uh, a discharge of lightning breath tears down from this thing towards you in oh, a it, line of misery. So it landed? Uh, no, it's up in the air. So how do lines work, Paige? Oh, you're yep. right. Nope, it'll land. Woohoo! <laughs> That's not better! <laughs> it's, it's a silver lining. A silver <laughs> dragon. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, uh, Jesus. Hey, Paige, I cast... Absorb elements as a uh, second I level spell. What do I need to make? Elements. What do I need to roll, Paige? Uh, it is a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay, good. I don't die. Because <laughs> I would have died there. Oh, Doesn't somebody in this party have revivify? Death is temporary. No. Yeah, someone in another town. <laughs> no. no. Oh, one... sure. <laughs> No one has revivified. Uh, Paige, would you also say that this is an effect that I can see? Yes. Excellent. It's coming right at you. I actually wonder if Roll20 would tell me that I'm just dead. I'm going to try that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, you're just dead. Well, I mean, uh, you know, there's a there's a number of negative hit points where you are just dead. I wonder if it has it built in. So what, did Paige. I have 11? I, I once again, roll. for reasons, need to know elemental oh, type of goose currently. <laughs> because he gave me a very specific answer last time. I, I think as question. soon as, as a blue-hued dragon would have jumped up, 
that she is smart enough to have gone blue, okay. no matter who. Cool. <laughs> Say that the big rhymes. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's not, you know, she's not a Rhodes Scholar. On the other hand, she is smart enough to know what is coming out of the front end of that dragon. What had happened was... <laughs> yes. What's gonna happen? Okay. So that was fun. I feel like we're initiative now. Are we? Are we at initiative now? Is this uh, we this don't is? have to be. Was that a surprise round? I was well, not surprised. I feel like no. literally at all. Gross. Was it at what was it then? Because it happened before any of us got to act. It was probably invisible somehow. No, it flew directly overhead. Yeah, so it it wouldn't have been a surprise attack. But let's just say it went first. Sure. I mean I rolled shitty on initiative anyway, so. Odds are <laughs> it was shenanigans. Yep. <laughs> The breath is going on 12. <laughs> That's the last thing I had quit clicking. So. <laughs> it pulses it. again. Oh, yeah. It. yeah. That's good. Pulses again, I just die. Actually, no, I'm in death save land now. Now I'm protected. Ha 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 Yeah, you oh. just take a strike on your death saves. Bologno playing the role of Ben tonight. Yeah. This was a shock and awe round. Uh, <laughs> no, it sure was. was. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Did you get uh, the Just it, in full disclosure chat, the way we determined Ben was not uh, able to play tonight is he, he tried to do a pun before we started, and it just was not up to It was start. awful. He was mm -hmm. very sad about it. Yes. Alrighty. Well... Uh, power off. Yes. Victor, we'll just assume the dragon and their rider have done their thing. Do the thing. Are we going to start a round of combat now? or If you want to. <laughs> we might not really we have, have We have three minutes. I think Victor needs maybe a week to think about how he <laughs> runs to react to the situation. Yes. Fair enough. Fair enough. In that case, uh... At the start of combat, Victor, I don't know. We'll find out next week on Feast. Well, I've got this charge of electricity damage for my absorb elements. So I'm sure it'll be Me super too. useful against this dragon. Uh, <laughs> dragon, maybe not so much. The dude sitting on its back. That's true. We got a little bit of time. Why don't you give us uh, more of a description of, um, of what we're fighting here? Yes, sure. who's our new So friends? you have a uh, a dragon, hang on, that looks like this. I will get you a picture. A picture or a thousand words, either one works. Mm -hmm. Yes. Indie Beyond, why you fight me? All right, a dragon that looks more or less like that. And a uh, man in red robes with a cloak over his head and a staff in his left hand. Fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm definitely what bloodied. Could go wrong. wrong. So much. I'm definitely so not dead. Much. Where's unconscious? There's... Down, but I need down, but not stable. Down, I need no. down, but not out. Making death saves. There we go. Actually, making death saves would be a pretty good title for the show. Well, mm. no, no, we haven't done a single one of those yet. Fair. Ooh, wait a minute. So you're unconscious? I sure am. Where's the the, the in thing? my hand still? Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's an object. It won't, like, disintegrate or anything, but... Um, I guess it's unlikely the wizard could... The evil Thane wizard could just grab it and run away. I mean... She did, she did say wizards could deal with it, but... It seems yeah, like yes, they could do but it I feel like... I feel like they need time. Like in, like in many things in life, 
a wizard can deal with just about anything given enough time and preparation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I tell you like what, having it unceremoniously chucked at her face is not the amount of time that she needs. Yes. So I tell you what, let's discuss that in our porch lag after the show. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, thank you, dear chat, dear listeners, dear watchers, for joining us on this adventure. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Thank you, chat, for your inspiration. Uh, in fact, that's why my mage is going so fast, because I used my DM inspiration. Uh, we love having you with us, dear chat. Thank you also, Brother Flounder, for your very generous gifts. We appreciate it quite a bit. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our listeners and supporters, particularly Coda. Chakuva, whoever that is. Whoever uh, that is. Security, and Brother Flounder, all of our newest subscribers. Thank you, everyone. And... Uh... Yeah, if you are interested in showing us support, come join us on Mondays for our Twitch stream and subscribe. All righty. So with that being said, uh, please join us next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern time to see what happens next. And follow us to, to Adventure! Adventure!